Okay, this class is soil mechanics, and this is the first lecture, so we will get right into it. First thing is that there are four different kinds of soil. There is gravel, sand, silt, and clay. And these soils differentiate amongst each other by the particle size. Gravel, for instance, has a size that is between the size of a pea and an orange. Sand ranges from finely crushed salt to the size of a pea. And then silt and clay, well, the particle sizes of silt and clay are smaller than what can be seen with the naked eye. It is similar to uh, the flour in your kitchen, for instance. If you pick up uh, flour and look at it, you cannot see an individual particle. It's too small to be seen. So, um, uh, silt and clay very small particles. Gravel and sand, you all know what sand is. Gravel is has larger particle sizes than sand. That's basically what it is. Now, what we, we group the gravel and sand together and we call them coarse grain soils. And we group the silt and clay together and we call them fine grain soils. Now, um, so the coarse grain soils are gravel and sand, the fine grain soils are silt and clay. But what you have to watch out for is that we also use the word fine and coarse within the group. In other words, I can have fine gravel, I can have coarse gravel. I can have fine sand and I have, can have coarse sand. They're still coarse grain soils, but if I have, for instance, a fine gravel, well, what is that? That's the size of a pea. If I have coarse gravel, it's the size of an orange. Similarly, with sand, fine sand is the size of crushed salt. Coarse sand is the size of a pea, approximately. Now, on a typical project, for instance, you want to build a structure at a particular site, for instance. And prior to the construction, the geotechnical engineer goes to the site to determine the types of soil that exist. And these soils are typically in layers. And for instance, we may have a site that has a layer of sand, underneath it a layer of clay, underneath it a layer of sand, and then underneath that bedrock, for instance. Now, when you go to that site, what happens is that frequently the geotechnical engineer takes samples of those soils and takes those samples back to the lab, and then we classify the soil uh, to determine what it is. And in the process, the geotechnical engineer should always be thinking about what can happen at the particular site that can go wrong, for instance. And typically around here, for instance, if we have a site that has gravel and sand at it, or gravel or sand at it, one of the things that we're worried about is liquefaction of the soils. Liquefaction is um, occurs when a soil that is stable under many situations um, starts to act like a liquid. And uh, we'll talk about uh, why that occurs, but um, in this particular area, uh, one of the ways that liquefaction can occur is if we have an earthquake that shakes the soils and um, it can cause, for instance, uh, under some circumstances, 
uh, gravel or sand to liquefy. And so if you have a site, if at your site you have gravel or sand, you have to think, okay, I might have a liquefaction issue at this particular site. On the other hand, if, you're, if your site has silt or clay, then one of the things that we're concerned about is settlement. What happens is that the soils over time can squeeze and compress and essentially uh, cause the structure to settle with time. It takes some time. It doesn't normally happen right away. And sometimes you have a site, for instance, this site, you have both sand and clay. Well, then you have to worry about both liquefaction and settlement. So each site is different. Each soil behaves differently. And um, one of the main focuses of this class is to determine the properties of these soils and decide um, what sort of uh, issues uh, are going to arise um, from the presence of these soils and the, uh, the, the loads that we're putting on them. Now, one of the primary differences between the fine grain soils and the coarse grain soils is their behavior with water. And what happens is that fine grain soils hold the water. They don't let the water go very easily. In other words, think about the, uh, the situation where we talked about uh, the flour in your kitchen. If you take water and mix it with that flour, you will get a paste. And if you were to mix water with you know sand or gravel, you don't get a paste. Why? Because the water does not react with the sand and gravel particles. Uh, they just the sand and gravel particles just uh, remain separate from the water. Basically, the the water will just roll off of them. Whereas uh, if the uh, if we put water with silt and clay, well, it's going to react similarly with the, like flour does and we will create a paste, or we'll get a paste, and um, that water does not come out of that um, soil very easily. In other words, I can't take and squeeze the water from the, for instance, the flour and water paste. It, w it won't come out. So because of this, the way that these two groups of soils, the fine grain and the coarse grain, because they react differently with water, we end up having quite a bit different behavior from those two types of soil groups. All right, the first topic with problems that we're going to do uh, deals with soil classification. And we have our four types of soil, and we're going to have a symbol with each one of those, associated with each one of those. So, gravel, we use the symbol G. Sand, we use the symbol S. Silt, well, we've already used S, so we can't use S again. We, instead, we use M. M is the first letter of the word for silt in Latin. And then we have clay, which then is C. So, what we're going to do with our soil classification is we're going to associate a symbol with it and um, it's going to be a two-letter symbol. So the first letter of the two letters is going to be G, S, M, or C. So the very first thing that you try to determine is do I have sand, gravel, silt, or clay? And then I give that first letter. To it, but then we're going to create a second letter. For instance, some little examples here. Some examples, for instance, I may have an SP. Well, what does SP stand for? It stands for sand poorly graded. Now, what does that mean? Poorly graded means I have the same particle size. So, in other words, if I have my sand and the sand has all P-sized particles, 
then it is a poorly graded sand because all the particles are the same size, a P. Or I could have a sand that has all the same size and they're all the size of salt. Well, then I also can have a poorly graded sand. But all those part that means all the particles are the same size, but in this case, the particle sizes are the size of salt. So, on the other hand, I could have a well-graded sand. It's called sand, SW, sand, well-graded, and that has different particle sizes. In other words, I could have a sand where some of the particles are the size of salt and other particles are the size of peas. That would mean I would have a, a variety of sizes in my sand, and I then can have a well-graded sand, SW, sand, well-graded. I could have a CL. What does that stand for? Clay. Low plasticity. What does low plasticity mean? Well, in a generic sense, it means the clay is not sticky. So sometimes I can mix water with my clay and it will be very sticky. <laughs> and other times it's just not very sticky. Now we're going to put uh, actual numbers on this in the laboratory. So I'm just talking uh, generically right now. But a CL is a clay with low plasticity and physically it's just not very sticky. On the other hand, if I have a CH, which is clay high plasticity, it is sticky. So these are just some examples. There are many more. I can similarly have ML, MH, what ML is a silt low plasticity. MH is silt high plasticity. The first topic of this on the soil classification will deal with coarse grain soils. So, how do we classify coarse grain soils? We do this in the laboratory and we take a stack of sieves. What's a sieve? Well, a sieve is something that you played with when you were a kid. If you went to the playground and there was a sandbox, or maybe you had a sandbox in your backyard or something like that, you took uh, you know, a shovel and you got a shovel full of sand and you put it into a little sieve with a screen in it, for instance and then you shook it and you know some of the sand passed through the screen some of the sand didn't pass through the screen and uh, maybe you separated out the big stones from the small stones and that sort of thing well we do that in the lab as well and what we, but what we do is we use different mesh sizes so i can have a coarse mesh like that i can have a fine mesh like that i can have a very coarse mesh like that and um what we do is we take a stack of sieves, so this is a stack of sieves, where we put the, the coarsest sieve at the top and the finest sieve at the bottom, and well, the very bottom has a pan, and in between we have other sieves, and then what we do is we take the uh, soil, the coarse grain soil and we put it into the stack of sieves and then we shake the stack of sieves and when we're all done we're going to have some particles on each on each screen you know I'm circling some of these and at the very bottom we have some that goes all the way through <laughs> through the finest and um, we are going then what we do is we use the weight on each screen to help us classify the soil. The way that the sieves are named basically is with numbers. And for instance, we have a number four sieve, or well, so there's a number four sieve, a number eight sieve, a number 20 sieve, number 40, 60, 100, 200 pan. That is not an unusual stack of sieves that we can use. Now, what does the number mean? The number gives us the number of holes per inch. So, in other words, 
if I look at one linear inch of, of screen, if I have four holes, so I have one, two, three, four holes in that one inch, that means I have a number four sieve. If I have, you know, uh, 60 holes in that one linear inch, then I have a number 60 sieve. Obviously, a number 60 sieve has smaller holes than a number 4 sieve. So, the bigger the number, the smaller the holes. The smallest sieve that we have, or the, the, and the biggest number, is the number 200. If you look at a number 200 sieve, the holes are so tiny that you almost can't see them. They look like a cloth. So, uh, and then, now, if the, if the, now what happens is that the holes get too big. So, then we have to come up with a different numbering scheme. So, sieves with holes bigger than number four are named by the hole size. So, we can go, for instance, we can have a three-quarter inch sieve. And that simply means that, um, that the one hole has a um, width of three quarters of an inch. We could even get, you know, get up to three inches, uh, a sieve with a three inch hole. So they can be pretty big. Now, um, when we look at our stack of sieves, what happens is that anything that passes the number 200 sieve, if it passes the number 200 sieve and gets into the pan, then that is our clay and silt. So anything that goes all the way through and ends up in a pan, well, then that gives us our clay and silt. Um, the number four sieve screens out the gravel. Anything that is on the number four sieve or is above the number four sieve is considered gravel. And anything but between between the number four sieve and the number 200 sieve, that is sand. So I've got sand there, I've got gravel up there, I have clay and silt down there. Here is an example calculation and the way a typical problem will be set up for you. For, this is a typical first quiz problem or exam problem. So suppose I have run this test. It's a, it's a pretty simple test to run. You just stack up your sieves and um, pour the soil inside, shake it, and we end up with, like I say, we end up with our, um, we end up with this. And, and what we do then is we figure out what is the percentage by weight on each sieve. So I have a certain percentage of my weight on the number four sieve, for instance, and, and so I work with the percentage to classify my coarse grain soil. So, for instance, suppose I have this stack of sieves. So I've got a three inch sieve, a three quarter inch sieve, a number four sieve, number 8 sieve, number 10, number 40, number 50, number 100, number 200, then I have my pan. And those, I then pour in my soil, and everything goes through the number th or the three inch sieve. Everything goes through the three inch sieve, so I have zero on the three inch sieve. And so in other words, this right here is my result of my sieve test. And you can see here that on, on the three-quarter inch sieve, I have 16% of my weight, total weight, 14% on the number four, and so forth. So in other words, these are the percentages on each sieve. In the end, I can see that on the, in the pan, I have 18% that goes to the pan. Well, that's, what do I know? That's my clay and silt down there. So I have 18% of my soil is clay and silt. And then um, this 
percentage, when I add that up, that is my sand. This percentage, when I add it up, that's my gravel. So your typical natural soil has just a mix of particles. If I add those together, for instance, 16 plus 14 is 30. So I get 30% gravel. If I add all of these together, I get 52%. So I get 52% sand. And then, of course, that is my 18%. That's my clay and silt. So that's the first thing that I do is I get those percentages. Then, in this example, we're asked to find the percent finer or percent passing. So we've this my given information in this problem is in green. So here's my given information. And with that, I want to find the percent finer and percent passing. So this is a typical quiz question. And it's quite simple. The easiest way is to start from the bottom and go up, in my opinion. So in other words, we're going to find the percent finer or percent passing. What does that mean? So if I have, let's look at the bottom. If I have 18% of the soil in the pan, that means that 18% pass the number 200 sieve. So it's quite straightforward. <laughs> I simply take this 18% here and then I move it to there. <laughs> That's my percent finer. Now, if I want to figure out how much past the number 100 sieve, well, how much past the number 100 sieve? Well, all of this, the 11 plus the 18, past the number 200 sieve. So the way, the easiest way to get that is, I start out here and I move, put a number over here. That's my percent finer. And then what do I do? Then I add these two numbers together, 18 and 11, and I get 29. Because that means I can see that, and, and it becomes a little bit more obvious, that um, 11 plus 18 passes the number 100 sieve. So that's 29. 29 passes the number 100 sieve. And if I keep adding as I go up, 29 plus 6 gives me 35. That means I have 35% passing the number 50 sieve. And I can keep doing that all the way up. So I add uh, 35 plus 5 gives me 40. And then 40 plus 15 gives me 55. 55 plus 8 gives me 63. 63 plus 7 gives me 70. 70 plus 14 gives me 84. 84 plus 16 gives 100. So at the very end, well, and then what do I see? 100 plus 0 is 100. So at the very end, I need to end up with 100. <laughs> so you've made a mistake if you get all the way to the top and you don't end up with 100. And I have now completed this problem and I figured out what my percent finer is. We're going to use that percent finer to uh, help classify our soil.